and we can just go ahead. Raghav, if you have any particular question, oh, oh Kara's arriving, I'll let her drive. Hello. Hi. Right. Hello, Raghav. Right. Hello, everyone. Hello, thank you for joining us. I am going to start recording. Oh, recording has already started. Excellent. Okay, thank right. you very right. much, Mark. That was very good. You were on before me. Great. Welcome to today's GSOC meeting. Um, we're, we're very excited about GSOC. All our proposed ideas have been um, moved to accepted state, which in practice they were already in, but it's very good to uh, keep that in line with previous practices. And um, as, as most of you probably know, we've submitted our GSOC org application as part of the CDF. So that's all gone in, it's all very good. We shall hear back um, March 9th. So that's really exciting times. Um, and today really we're here to answer questions uh, from students and mentors. So there's no outstanding admin or business things to do from my side. Um, it's really just an open forum for you all to ask questions about Jenkins, about getting started with Jenkins, about open source, about the community, about GSOC, anything you like. So I did propose and a new idea is in as, as, a, as a draft. Okay, and great. I'm happy to discuss with any of the students if they'd like to talk further about what that draft might mean. We had one student that was previously asking questions about the specific tool that is proposed in that. So and they were doing some exploring with it. So it, it's a, a different a different idea using a similar tool that they'd used before. Excellent. Well, I would like to hear more about it. Would you like to share your screen? And oh, sure, you bet. Yeah, so so the, the tool is, let's see, sharing screen, and it'll be just a minute while I get screen dragged in. Okay, here we go. So the idea is that uh, we would improve the pipeline steps doc generator itself. Oh, and I've gone to the wrong place. Just a minute. Need to find the, you know. While there you're doing go. that, what I'll say is I love that you have done another project idea proposal. And I think this is a really great illustration um, of the idea that anyone can still make project proposals. So even though we have submitted our application, we are still open for project proposals. That just creates, you know, more variety for students to choose from, more engagement. We welcome new mentors and we welcome more project ideas. Right. Thank you. Yeah, good. So the, so this idea is that the, the experience for a user who is reading pipeline step documentation is particularly poor on certain pages and the one example is the checkout documentation. The other is the properties documentation that are just enormous pages with expanding and contracting sections. And, and this is generated from code. And since it is generated from code, it seems like a viable project for someone to find a better way to write that code so that instead of one, one single monster page for checkout, we would have uh, many smaller pages. Now there's a, a transition challenge there and that we don't want to break hyperlinks. We, we have several different things that need to be considered uh, that make the project um, interesting and challenging in addition to the, the design part and the how should the UI feel and how should the web page layout. So the other suggestion here was that we get lots of questions or comments in our documentation that seem to indicate the, indicate the users don't realize that the pipeline syntax snippet generator is very, very good at generating, at generating syntax examples. And so it may be that we would like something in this tool that automatically, if the, if the doc is empty, automatically includes some boilerplate text to encourage people to use the pipeline syntax snippet generator. 
that that's really the the extent of the idea the the tool is is useful interesting it's actually a, a Jen jenkins plug-in loader and makes it kind of cool yeah thank you for sharing that's a really interesting project idea and one of the things that i find really appealing about it is we may indeed get um more involvement from people who are already uh, involved in the Jenkins doc sig, right. which Mark is very involved in. So that would be really nice. We want to open up GSOC to as many people from as many routes as possible. And I, I really like this project idea. Thank you. And I'll stop sharing. So that that was all I had on that topic um, with the four, with the three students we've got and the one potential mentor. Any any question other questions? Mark, are you still looking for mentors on that project? Um, we could, we, it would benefit to have at least one more. Kristen is willing to mentor, but she's also offered to mentor other projects. So, so it's Java code and it, it would do well if they had some JavaScript background or some, some doc site. So Jenkins.io background as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would love to have additional mentors. Yeah, you can tentatively add me there. So, oh. yeah, after the mm, past couple of weeks, I decided that, uh, yeah, finally, I would like uh, to be a mentor in JSOC. Well, I won always wanted, but yeah, now that regardless of other states, I will. So, Great. Okay. So, well, yeah. since, I, since I detected an error in the page anyway, I need to submit a, a correction to that page. So Oleg, I'll add you in that same correction yeah. pull request. There's a little bit of embarrassing um, ASCII doc mistake on that page that I need to fix. So I'll get that fixed and include you as a, a potential mentor in that same pull request. All right. And yeah, if CDF needs our means, um, I'm available to share expertise like in uh, previous years, uh, but yeah. I am sure your expertise will be very much appreciated. Um, yes, I think we're at the limit of five org admins, but yeah, I think fine. the level of time commitment maybe varies between them. So we can we can raise up. And in any case, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure everyone will be very happy to have your expertise, Alex. So thank you. That's awesome. Okay. Um, one of the things that I will ask GSOC, because I have been mulling this um, potential, is for this round of GSOC this, this year, they are allowing um, applicants who are maybe not in a formal academic um, program of study. My understanding is that they're opening it up to individuals who have also gone to a boot camp. Although it may have to be an accredited boot camp, um, but I would love to find out if things like the boot camp that um, Zanip that, um, is running in Africa and is very involved in with She Codes Africa, and I'm I'm wondering if we that would maybe qualify and we could maybe find students and mentors there. I think that'd be a really interesting collaboration, but it is something that I need to ask you to talk about because that's a change in the rules for this year. So yeah, in our case, collaboration with any other project or uh, open source organization is definitely beneficial. We have experience uh, from past years, like Jenkins X, FOSSI, other organizations. So if you could do the same level, uh, the same at the CDF level, why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and there is there is discussion that there may be collaboration with the Tecton Tecton group at CDF for the Tecton client plugin, right? And others. So so I, I think good. That's that sounds great. Yes, yes, that would be um, that would be very good too. We shall see how that plays out, but yes, it's potential. Do we have any additional or any questions either on this project or any other questions from our students and mentors on the call? Hello, everyone. Hello, Himanshu. Welcome. Oh, thank you. 
Uh, I have a question uh, regarding that plugin installation manager, uh, that project idea. Uh, last in last meeting, uh, Ulik said that he'll uh, go to the project idea website and maybe uh, add some or do some changes on that. Like I want to ask, like, uh, did he do that, those changes? Because I I like followed that website but wasn't able to like find any change. No, I didn't. I uh, made changes locally, but uh, I believe that I haven't submitted a pull request. So, yeah, I will uh, do it today. Okay. Is it, okay. it, would it be worth having you describe verbally the kinds of changes you're envisioning there, Oleg, so that they might be able uh, to ask questions? Installation manager, right? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks, so, Mark. Thank yeah, there, um, there were several major changes. Uh, firstly, in terms of uh, uh, how the plugin installation manager is organized. And secondly, um, uh, there were a lot of stabilization work and adoption work. Still, if you take a look at the code, uh, there is a lot of uh, low hanging fruit there. For example, uh, uh, error propagation, uh, also logging, because these tasks uh, um, have been identified as something we need to do. So these are tasks you can take a look at at the moment. And for improvement perspectives, um, yeah, we have a lot of uh, uh, items we could improve in terms of um, up, upgrade management. So for example, how you update plugins, how you verify update centers, how you manage mirrors. Uh, there is a lot of options you can add. And also um, there are some uh, differences between uh, plugin installation manager and uh, the previous scripts because previous scripts used to use um, uh, system tools, for example, for downloading plugins. And these system tools, for example, we use the system configuration of uh, proxy settings. And uh, when we started switching to the plugin installation manager tool, I, it appeared that some of these advanced options uh, do not work because they have never been uh, fully documented. They just work because of this Ukraine free operating system. So one of potential uh, subjects for discovery and then for improving it is uh, uh, how would you use plugin installation manager in this enterprise use cases? So ensuring that uh, uh, you can configure proxy settings, um, uh, download retries, uh, maybe that uh, you can uh, better verify a plugin consistency on download. For example, um, today we blocked one plugin on the update center because it was not HPI file, but it was public uh, text file downloaded uh, with the HPI extension. And uh, I'm pretty sure that plugin installation manager on this case would fail with whatever crappy exception. So just uh, looking at it uh, and basically improving uh, behavior in uh, various uh, edge cases, something one could do. Well, and we've certainly had questions from users of plugin installation manager related to the retry logic that you mentioned, because mm -hmm. today it doesn't do retries, right? And and there are times when a, a mere, oh, it does, okay. It just doesn't do it well. Ah, I see, okay. Well, I know we've had, we've had cases where one or more of the mirrors were behaving badly or erratically, and we would get reports from users, hey, my plugin installation manager call failed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so um, it was a case before also. Mm. Um, so mm, yeah, even with uh, scripts, sometimes when you build your image, uh, it may fail. But obviously improving the situation uh, by adding additional checks, adding failover, maybe uh, somehow contacting mirrors directly if uh, the main update center is not available is something you could do. Okay, Another then like, uh, okay, yeah. sorry, yeah, continue, sorry, sorry, continue. Another item uh, you may want to consider is working uh, with non-standard update centers. Because yeah, we have Jenkins Update Center and uh, there are other update centers. So for example, uh, there is a project called Update Center 2 uh, in Jenkins infrastructure, which you can build uh, and deploy your own update center. There is also Giuseppe, 
uh, project uh, in Jenkins organization, which is embedded update center. Some vendors provide custom update centers. So for example, CloudBees uh, offers um, custom update centers and its products. And with all these update centers, uh, plugin installation manager uh, behaves, uh, let's say, slightly different, yeah. Because sometimes it lacks information, etc., and uh, improving test coverage uh, and adding support uh, for other update centers uh, is also something uh, um, we could do. Okay, thank you so much. Like uh, I was like previously when I was exploring this project, I did not look into the update center part that much. But now you have mentioned it. Uh, so well, yeah. uh, I'll go into that. And there was one more part about that uh, JCask, like integration with JCask. So we are going to focus on that for this year. Why not? Uh, it's uh, still um, a valid uh, feature request. For example, uh, exporting a plugin list in YAML and uh, being able to handle this uh, YAML file in Plugin Installation Manager. So, so now would that then be a, an enhancement to JCask and to, so to the configuration as code plugin and to plugin installation manager? Is that how yes, that would like, work? Yeah. Ah, mm -hmm. Okay. So, so what, today, was, uh, yeah. what was the original vision for that? That um, JCask is basically a tool which exports system configuration and also exports uh, plugin information and other information needed for plugin installation manager to operate. But then a plugin installation manager on startup can read the same Jenkins YAML and extract plugin list from there and install them. And then you basically have two options. One option is to do it during the build time. Another option is to do it during runtime. So, so there were even discussions about including plugin installation manager into the Jenkins core. Obviously it's not going to happen anytime soon, uh, but uh, at least uh, we could uh, prepare a configuration so that the tool can consume it. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. I'll like I'll look into everything that you mentioned. I'll have to mm -hmm. go through this video once more. Like note down everything. Thank you, thank you for the information. Help. I should have documented it. Thank you for your question, Himachu. Uh, hi everyone. I have a, I have two questions actually. Uh, hi Mark. Hi everyone. So um, my first question is that um, what is the process for a potential mentor to become a mentor if there is a process uh, if there exists a process for that. And the second question is that uh, what are the responsibilities for a potential mentor before the sub uh, submission of a student application, and uh, should I refer to the uh, doc which was uh, designed for gsoc 2020 for the mentors for that yeah, that, that's my question those are my questions yeah, you can follow this process there will be some differences because again uh, there will be another gsoc organization this year uh, but in terms of getting in touch with the community 2020 doc is totally applicable also there is uh, a page jenkins.io slash projects uh, slash gsoc slash mentors so the one uh, which was posted by her and all, uh, there is also a lot of information there okay. this information uh, remains mostly relevant yeah there are some changes in terms of, uh, because of the changes in the gsoc program uh, but uh, yeah all the uh, main steps remain the same it's just about Relations. Okay. Well, and and I assume that in terms of offering to mentor multiple project ideas, all you do is submit a pull request to Jenkins.io, uh, adding your name to those project ideas. Is the yeah. I, yeah, I think it's also in the list. Ah, oh right, that's part of the document. Great. Well, it, so the main. Uh, need is not to submit a list but uh, to be actually active uh, in the project idea channels because uh, yeah there are already students reaching out and asking questions uh, if uh, cdf gets accepted and hopefully it will uh, then uh, there will be even more students and yeah the most critical part uh, at the moment is to actually guide uh, the students and help them uh, to process project ideas and to come up with uh, 
actual proposals. And this is why we need mentors. Well, and, and that's a that's a great example of, of Rishab where you and I are almost 12 hours apart from each other, right? So, so yes. we have nearly 24 hour a day coverage. I actually get to sleep and you yeah. get to sleep. So it's a big win for both of us. And for Kara, who is who is six hours offset from the two of us, so so. But the globe yeah, covered. Sure. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we need somebody in Australia still. Well, you can uh, invite Bruno. Uh, he's uh, in New Zealand. Close enough. Yeah. We definitely welcome additional mentors and the more mentors, um, the more engagement for students, but also the more flexibility on the, for the mentors who are involved. So we, it's easier to cover if, if people need to take weeks off for their own lives. Um, so that's quite nice. And also the reduced hours of uh, GSOC this summer will mean in all likelihood, students will be producing slightly smaller projects um, and we expect that and slightly less code. So there'll be less code reviews, but nonetheless, students will need to be um, guided and supported on their journey, both in open source and with Jenkins and with their specific projects. So, yeah. Any other questions? I guess we're just all waiting with fingers crossed. <laughs> I, I, I owe a, an expression of gratitude to Ian Goel for contributions already made to the Git client plugin test transformation. We've had a test transformation project that Rishab helps help start 18 months ago, Rishab, that we've, yes, been, so we've been working and it, it had paused and had no traction. Ayan has helped mm -hmm. it restart it. Thank you very much. And it's, I, I assume that the experience is positive for Ayan, but if, if there's feedback you want to give there, you're welcome to give it and here is fine saying, hey, Mark, you're being too rude or Mark, you're not, not being considerate enough, et cetera. Those are, those are all good things to hear. Thank you, Mark. Uh, actually, that uh, project was very, I can't, I, I actually prefer Java uh, projects and uh, I was a bit uh, at the start, uh, like anxious to work on Jenkins. Like Jenkins is such an organization. We all have heard. If we have not used Jenkins, still we know Je what Jenkins is. And ultimately finding such an issue, I started looking and it took me some days, but uh, ultimately with your guidance and uh, the project was like, uh, I learned uh, so much about testing and using G unit on Java. It uh, actually helped me understand the whole Git client plugin and the Git plugin also, and by which I would uh, also able to understand the idea somewhat. Uh, I still lack behind some ways to on the Git uh, bindings idea, and I'm still exploring about it. But uh, I would say testing and uh, using the uh, test are very much important in understanding code base for any project. And like you said, Mark, uh, you were not rude at all. Uh, all your points and and all your comments were highly appreciated. Uh, it actually uh, made me, I would say, made me a better programmer. Great, super. So, and, and there's still lots of work to do on that. And and Ayan, you are not expected to do all of it. Just, it's good to get some experience and then you can look at other things. I, I assume that's part of the experience here for you as students is that you explore a little bit of several different areas and explore intentionally, knowing that you're not going to do deeply until, until you're ready to submit a project proposal. Indeed, that's a great way for students to explore what they would be interested in working on um, and to be learning the whole time, so. Excellent. Any other questions, topics for discussion for today? Okay, Sagar so has a question in the chat. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I also have a, a question um, about Google season of dogs, actually. Uh, so how do we want to organize it uh, this year? Would it be JSOC seek or would it be advocacy and outreach or would it be somewhere on the CDF level? Yeah, so, so how about, let's take Sagar's question first and then we'll come back mm-hmm. to your question, Oleg, if that's okay. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so Gao's question is, uh, actually, it was, it's just a very nice comment, but there may be an implicit question following. I uploaded my Jenkins on remote server on CloudOcean and containerized containerized with Docker. That was a nice experience. <laughs> Excellent. So, so was that using DigitalOcean, which I am curious which providers you're using, because we've got, we've had promotional offers from various cloud providers. Amazon has an initiative. Google has one. We just, I just heard about DigitalOcean's offering recently, and I know Oracle has one. So several of the cloud providers offer um, free, free first month kind of experiences where they'll give you a certain amount of hours or a certain amount of dollars. Was, was that where it was, Sagar? Ah, okay, so use the credits, good. All right, very good. So next next topic then should we take on Oleg's question about Google Google season of docs? So the, the that one's a little scary for me because it's due March twenty fourth. So we've only we've got less than a month now to get our our submission ready. And my intent was to do a <clears throat> sorry to do a pull request to the to re basically reuse 2020's pattern in 2021, even though they've got a different thing, different, uh, there are some changes in their processing. The changes in the processing that most worry me like actually are related to governance and finances. They use a yeah. different financial technique where the, the project hires the, the writer and pays the writer and Google gives money to the project. And that's when I'm not sure how to make it work. Yeah, so regarding that, uh, there are two news. Firstly, good news. Um, as long as it's considered as uh, uh, sponsorship slash uh, uh, stipend, uh, one time one, we can uh, just use community bridge. But community bridge cannot be used uh, to pay salaries. So depending on the country legislation, um, the GSOC program may be considered uh, in a different way. Uh, so whether it's legal or not. So for example, in the United States, uh, when you go to um, uh, GSOC, uh, you may need uh, to get permission from your university so that it counts towards the program, especially if you're a foreign student. And in such case, um, it might be a problem to pay this stipend from community bridge. But uh, for the majority of countries, uh, we should be able to do that. Okay, and so my next steps there are, is this something I need to bring to the governance board by email? What, what steps should I take so that I, I have the best chance of making this work in time for our, our application to Google Season of Docs? Okay, so application, uh, we should be fine. Oh, okay. What right, the, the financial part is, does not have to, the stipend part does not have to all be in place in time for the, the application. Yeah. So we have a financial part in place uh, for supporting that. Okay. Uh, what we will need to check is eligibility of particular students uh, when they apply. I see. And yeah, for example, uh, yeah, it's basically becomes our responsibility as well. And uh, there are two ways. Firstly, we accept uh, the student we need uh, to clear the financial side before we accept the student. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so regarding the documentation, uh, one we created um, last year should be relevant enough. It's not as expensive as GSOC, but uh, it was good enough for the application. We just can keep it as is. Uh, the main problem is again project ideas. 
And, and those we're discussing in the DOCS special interest group and the office hours for DOCS. So the Monday afternoon, okay, Monday late European time and Thursday uh, end of day Africa time we're discussing. So Zinab uh, and Kristen have been involved in those discussions. We'll continue gathering those mm -hmm. and those will be part of the poll request. Yeah, so I've got a number of project ideas in the notes already. No, oh, good. Let's keep it. That, that actually was was what inspired the pipeline st step stock generator uh, project was we've been discussing in docs office hours and realized really this is a coding exercise not a the docs pipeline step stock generator is all about code, even though what it generates is docs and is mm -hmm. is very much similar to the rest API concept idea that's already an accepted or an, yeah, an already an accepted project idea. So to answer question in the chat, uh, JSOC and JSOT, um, uh, they are formally conducted in parallel. Mm -hmm. So their timelines overlap, uh, but at the same time, what timelines are different. So the implementation part, active part for students and mentees, they are different. And there are examples of students applying to both programs. Well, and, and mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, eligible applicants to Google Season of Docs are actually different than, yep. than Google Summer of Code, right? Summer of Code is intentionally limited to students. Google Season of Docs uh, aspires to invite uh, professional writers who may be well into their careers to contribute to open source. So it's, it's not just students. Students are also welcome, but it's, it's students and potentially people who are working as, as full-time writing professionals already. Yeah, right. Mm. But well, uh, JSOT uh, documentation explicitly uh, allows not only professional writers but also amateurs. Uh, so students may be eligible. Mm -hmm. Right. At the same time, yeah, the recommendation is to focus only on one program. And well, if you're interested in a Google season of docs, uh, the application period will be August uh, and September. So probably it's too early to worry about it anyway. For um, Google Season of Docs last year, Forging Its X, we did have um, a, a young developer very, very early in his career. I guess young isn't the right word, um, but early in his career. And he brought a lot to the documentation project and did really interesting work um, that was really strongly using his coding skills, but it really improved the Jenkins X documentation. Um, so there is always that angle as well, if, if um, individuals are interested. So there's lots of ways to approach who uh, would be involved in Google Season of Docs and what they would contribute. So it's kind of, it, it's got a, um, it has a nice broad scope. And what we really want are applicants who, um, just are very committed to open source the project and, and are very committed to their own work and, and really engaged and excited to, to, to be part of a season of docs and to contribute. So it's quite nice. We're happy to, I mean, Mark is really involved in it, but um, mm -hmm. nice that there's that scope. Do we have any more questions? Um, on either season of docs or Google Summer of Code uh, or Jenkins, any anything, and then we're any more issues to discuss. Okay, good. All right, I think we can wrap up at basically the half an hour. Good meeting. Thank you all for being here. So happy that Oleg is is um, available and able to take a. Uh, a stronger step mentoring and, and advising on the org admin. Um, we really welcome that. So that's a great addition to to, to, be back to some extent. <laughs> You're in now. <laughs> no, it's great. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> all right. Thanks, y'all. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.